The bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Drifting along, singing a song under a Western moon. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest today is Motion Pictures' He-Man of the West, Don Berry. And now, here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. Hear my song as I ride along, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Herding the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. Nowhere to go and nothing to do, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Let me ride that long trail down to the end where the skies are always blue. Hear my song as I ride along, I'm just a happy roving cowboy. Herding the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. Ain't got a dime to spend in my time I'm just a happy roving cowboy Let me sing my song till they call me home To the land beyond the blue Hear my song as I ride along I'm just a happy roving cowboy Burden the dark clouds out of the sky Keeping the heavens blue the riders of the Purple Sage, your favorite singers of Western songs, want you to hear I'll Never Let You Go, Little Darling. You say we've reached the hour of parting You say our dream of love is gone But I could never live without you Please don't leave me all alone I'll never let you go, little darling I'm sorry that I made you cry I'll never let you go cause I love you So please don't try to say The stars would tumble down beside me The moon would hang its head and cry My arms would never hold another If you should ever say goodbye I'll never let you go Sorry that I made you cry I'll never let you go Cause I love you So please don't try to say All the traditions the West holds, there is none stronger than that of the loyalty of the cowpoke to the brand for which he rides. Why? Well, a range boss drove his men hard, kept them hopping, riding herd, mending fence, troubleshooting the day through. But a range boss took good care of his riders and backed their play all the way. He expected and got equal loyalty from them. That's the way that Weber's good bread keeps the loyalty of a lot of people today. Not because we say it's good bread, but because it is good bread and customers know it. You can count on it that every fresh baked loaf of Weber's bread makes a welcome addition to any meal. Taste it. The fresh, firm, even texture, the spread-through flavor, the distinctive, rich goodness of Weber's bread. And next time you shop, look for Weber's good bread in the famous blue gingham wrapper. Make sure you get Weber's good bread fresh today on your grocer's shelves. Now, the riders of the Purple Sage have a song that's not exactly Western, but I think you'll like it. Managua, Nicaragua. Managua, Nicaragua. 
Nicaragua is a beautiful town. You buy a hacienda for a few pesos down. You give it to the lady you were trying to win. But her papa doesn't let you come in. Managua, Nicaragua is a heavenly place. You ask the senorita for a little embrace. She answered you, caramba, scramba, bomberito. In Managua, Nicaragua, that's no. I have been to many tropic ports. I might include even Brooklyn. If you're ever feeling out of sorts, I'd like to recommend a look in. Managua, Nicaragua, what a wonderful spot. There's coffee and bananas and a temperature hot. So take a trip and on a ship go sailing away across the aqua to Managua, Nicaragua. Ole, ole, ole. Across the aqua to Managua, Nicaragua. Ole. Our guest on All Star Western Theater today is a star we're proud to know. The hero of many a movie, and in real life, a man's man. Let's give a big Western welcome to Mr. Donald Barry. And as Don Red Barry, he's going to join Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage in telling today's story of the West. It's called Bid for Election. In the West, a man has a feeling he belongs. He rides the trail as do the Riders of the Purple Sage. He knows that all the out of doors is his, from the mountains overhead to the streams that trickle through the all but dry arroyas. Yes, sir, his from the first warm rays of the sun till stars shine down on lonely bedrolls at night. So it's no wonder friendships in the West mean a little more. No wonder a man will go out of his way to keep the West decent. Come on, boys. We've got to meet Don Red Berry at the hideout. And we've got to get there without the sheriff spotting us. So let's get going. Hi, Taylor. Now, get up. Oh, boy, whoa. Howdy, Red. Hi, Red. Hi, Red. Howdy, boys. I got your message, boy. Man, you're welcome as a spring rain. And we've got some important gabbing to do. Say, Al, yeah. will you and Johnny put these horses somewhere so they'll be out of sight? Take them over there under those trees. Okay, boy. We can't afford to have anybody spot them. And there's a lot of eyes and ears in this vicinity right now. Say, Red, let you and me go inside the cabin here. The way you sound, boy, a man would think you're just one jump ahead of the sheriff. Well, put it the other way around and you'd be sizing up the situation just perfect. The sheriff's just one jump ahead of us. And one jump ahead of all the ranchers hereabouts. They tell me the Soapy Hobart's boys have been doing a lot of rustling in this part of the country. The sheriff claims to have Soapy Hobart locked up in jail, Red. Well, that's good. That's a nice piece of work. Well, wait a minute, Red. I said the sheriff claims he's got Soapy. Nobody's seen him. Leastwise, none of the ranchers have. And it don't look like they're going to get a chance to either. Because the sheriff's got the jail surrounded by a circle of armed guards. That's not so good. The sheriff says he's determined Soapy will have a fair trial. And he's afraid the feeling against him is so high... That the ranchers might try to take the law into their own hands. You got any reason to doubt that this actually is Soapy in jail? Well, the sheriff's record ain't any too good. An election is day after tomorrow. Oh, so that's it. A couple of days before election. The sheriff claims he's caught the prize jack leg of the West. Well, the townspeople aren't much interested because Soapy's rustling doesn't affect them. 
But the ranchers are. They're mighty interested. What about you and the boys? Well, the ranchers asked us to ride down here and see what we could find out. If the sheriff hasn't really got Soapy, they're going to run him out of office. All right, you're going to investigate. What do I do? Red, the boys and I have figured out a little scheme. But we can't go through with it ourselves because the sheriff knows us. We need some help. You know me, Foy. Name the rock you want ridden and I'll ride him. All right. How'd you like to go to jail until after the election? Will it help clean up this situation? Might. Once I'm locked up, what do I do? Find out whether it's the real Soapy Hobart the sheriff has got. Or if he's railroading some lonely boomer who just happened to be riding through the country. And signal the news to us. Okay. The boys and I will be in that empty store building right across the street. You'll recognize it. It used to be a newspaper office before the editor started printing stuff about the sheriff. We'll use it as a hideout. Light one match at your cell window for us to see if the sheriff hasn't got any prisoner at all. Two in quick succession if the prisoner isn't the real Soapy. And three if the prisoner is Soapy. From what you said, I doubt if I'll have to use three matches. I think two will be all you'll need to carry. I'm almost convinced the sheriff would railroad his own brother to win that election. Well, I'll be shoving off for him. Right. Good luck to you. We haven't seen any signal at all, Al. Yeah. Dark night, too. The match would look as big as a campfire. I'm getting worried. Maybe something went wrong. Well, I hope not. Well, anyway, Red will have to stay in jail now until after the election, won't he? Well, that was the plan. Well, Foy, if you'd ask my advice, uh, I'd have told you you'd have to do something besides shoot out a window across the street from the jail. That looks too much like a put-up job. Maybe the reason we haven't seen a signal is because the sheriff guessed the window was broke by uh, on purpose or something. Well, we did it for two reasons, Al. First, if the sheriff is suspicious, the ranchers are out to get him, and he probably is. Yeah. He'll be watching for some smart move, not a dumb one like Red pulled. Well, maybe. Second, this building is the only thing near the jail that we could use as a hideout. And we couldn't even have used it as dirty as the window was. Too dirty to see through. Well, couldn't we have washed the... No, we couldn't, I guess. Wait a minute. Is that a signal? Where? Second window from the left. No, no, I guess not. Oh, I wish Johnny would hurry up and get back. Oh, you know, Johnny, if he runs into a pretty little sage hen somewhere, he's going to spend the biggest part of the night cutting up in front of her. And forget we sent him to pick up news about what's going on. Oh, I've got more faith in Johnny than, than that, Al. I ain't. Johnny is a hombre. You'd rather go girling around than eat. Wait here. Wait right here. I'll crawl across the floor to the other side. Have a view of every corner of the jail. Okay. Boy, don't you suppose Red is too drunk to signal, or do you? When he fell off his horse, you know... Oh, he... too drunk. Red never touched a drop in his life. Well, he fell off his horse. And when the sheriff nabbed him, the sheriff said Red was a... Uh... Well, Red fell off on purpose. But before he rode into town, he took a bottle and fixed himself up so it looked like the real thing. Hey, boy, somebody's coming in the back door. Yeah, stay here. Yeah. I'll slip back. If we have to fight, we can fight together. Yeah. Hey, night out. Oh, it's Johnny. We're alone, Johnny. But don't kick up any ruckus. Boy, you know what happened? The sheriff is telling everybody in town he's Captain Soapy's right-hand man, Curly Hamilton. Anybody see him do it? Everybody. We did, too. Curly was the one who broke this window, and he fell off the Hey, wait a minute. And... Are you trying to tell us the sheriff is trying to pass Red Barry off as Curly Hamilton? Al, we're in big trouble this you time. You said it. The sheriff, too, jumps ahead of us now, not just one. Come on, we've got to decide what to do in fast. Let's get going. Jack, for bringing Curly into my office. She can go now. I won't need you. Okay, Sheriff. Well, yeah, Curly, we finally got you, didn't we? <laughs> I'm not Curly Hamilton, and you know it, Sheriff. I know a lot of things, Barry. I know you're not Curly, but I also know you're not drunk like you pretended to be. Then why can't... And you... I also know a lot more than you think I do about Boy Willen and these boys. Maybe they know a lot now, more... Boy Willen acted the part of the lead goat, and you tagged right along, Barry. You're in deep this time, kid. The trap's been sprung and you ain't getting away. What do you mean by that? I've told the whole town you're Curly Hamilton. 
soapy lieutenant in a wrestling gang. You think anybody will swallow that? <laughs> Why not? You're about Curly's size, and we hustled you over here so fast nobody got a good look at you. Yeah, but sooner or later... Happen, Soapy and Curly both is going to get a lot of extra votes from me at the election. <laughs> I'll approve who I am and be out of here long before the first vote is cast. Now, that's the sad part about this, Barry. I made the announcement on the spur of the moment, in a mm-hmm. spirit of enthusiasm, you might say. You know, it'd be embarrassing for me to back down now. Fatal to my chances in the election, you might say, hmm? So? So I'll have to get rid of you, Barry. You... But I'll have to do it in a way that'll make things look nice and real. Now, I'll say I had you here in my office questioning you. I'll say I was holding my gun like this, and you came at my wrist... Like this! Guess you must be getting old, Sheriff. A little forgetful. Just to make sure you stay put, here's something to prolong your nap. That ought to do it. Now to get out of here. and Johnny to get the horses ready quick as the shooting started. Thought maybe you'd head back here to the newspaper office, so I waited. How'd you get away? Knocked out the sheriff and ran for it. Found out what we wanted to know for. Has he got Soapy Hobart? No, he hasn't. The sheriff's got some fellow locked up, but it isn't Soapy. Sheriff's framing him, same as he wanted to frame me. Well, get your breath. We'll have to wait here for a while. But as soon as we can get out, we'll start spreading the news. Ranchers will probably all meet and free this hombre. You ought to have left when the shooting started, Foy. The block is alive with sheriff's men. Well, they haven't thought of looking in here yet. I ran the opposite direction until I lost the trail, then doubled back. What are you holding your shoulder for? Did you get hit? Just a scratch. Sends the hide, nothing more. Can't put a bandage on it until we get someplace where there's more light. Read for it in there. Got the drop on you? It's a sheriff. We know you're there. Come on out. Stay where you are, Foy. Make him come in. Right. Come on out before we start shooting. I don't believe anybody's here, Sheriff. Hey, heard just as where Willem was hiding out, though. He's watching the jail from here. <laughs> Probably lit out as the first shot was fired. We better find out. Now go on in quick and low and shut the door. Lock out the light behind us in case they're here and want to use us as target. Okay. Keep down now. Wait until they're right on us. Yeah. Hey, did you hear anything then? Jack. No. Oh. All right, Jack. Now let's move in. Careful, though. Okay, boy! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Lucky we got the drop on both of them, Red. Keep them covered. I'll get the sheriff's handcuffs. Oh, now, now, hold on, boy. Give me your right wrist. Now, you're not putting my own handcuffs. That's it. Hmm? Now, you're armed, Gunslick. But I won't give any trouble. The left wrist, your left to the sheriff's right. Good. Now, Sheriff, we're going to walk over to the jail steps, and when we get there, you're going to make a full confession. Start moving. And as soon as you open the door, you better call to all of your men and have them put their guns down. Then we'll all get killed. Open the door, Sheriff. Never mind, I'll do it. Go on, now, get out. Jack down. Fall flat. All right, boys, on the back. Sheriff. Get out. Call this rifle fire. I'm going to plug you with your own forty-five. Oh, Oh, no, you wouldn't do that. Hmm? Call them off, Sheriff. The next one won't miss. Yeah, 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 I'll kill them. Hey, Curtis, Fred! Hold your fire, it's me! Well, Red, looks like the election's in the bag. Yeah, guess I'll be moving along. Well, I know one fella who will always be glad you came. You mean the boomer the sheriff arrested for Sophie Hobart? Yeah. You know, boy, the boomer seems like a straight shooting hombre. Had a long talk with him last night. He's just a fellow who hasn't been able to settle out down like most folks do. So I invited him to ride the trail with me for a while. Oh, he's going to like that. Think he'll make a first-rate sidekick. And that's what I need. The folks here want their sheriff. They want to be free from rustlers. They want their homes. Sometimes I get tired of fighting, too. Well, I better be starting on. I've got a sidekick to travel with. When you see me again, I'll have seen a lot more of the trail. 
So long, boy. So long, Red. Good luck to you. Don't say that, partner, unless you're ready to back it. That's the lesson many a dude learned hard in the old days. Tempers were quick and drawers were faster. And it just wasn't good business to make a statement you couldn't back. Well, times have changed, but the custom remains. People still expect you to back your statement. Weber's good bread does exactly that. Weber's bread is good bread, and you'll know it. Weber's is the bread with spread-through flavor. You'll taste it. Weber's means fresh baked, fine, even texture, and your family will like it. Ask for it. Weber's good bread in the famous blue gingham wrapper. Next time you shop, look for Weber's good bread, fresh on your grocer's shelves. Now here's Foy Willing again and his guest star, Don Berry. Don, I'll have to repeat what I always say when you're with us on All-Star Western Theater. It's good to have you. And when we know you're coming, we know we'll be having a great performance. It's always a pleasure to appear with you and the boys, Foy. Well, we hope you'll come back again and real soon. And meanwhile, we'll be seeing you in that latest picture of yours, Republic's The Last Crooked Mile. Well, the writers of the Purple Stage are ready with a fast-moving novelty number from that land where rough riding is a habit, Wyoming. Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Cause there's a sheriff back there looking for me high and low and high and low. Oh, give me back my prairie with the cattle and wild game. Where the hills are nice and curvy and the women are the same. Why, cowboys all yell whoopee while the lariat they twirl. And the timber wolves yell, Timber! Timber! When they see a pretty girl, why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Cause there's a sheriff back there looking for me high and low and high and low. Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Why, oh, why did I ever have to go? Why, oh, why did I ever leave Wyoming? Oh, there's a sheriff back there looking for me high and low and high and low and high. Now to feature the instrumental portion of our all-star Western theater, it's Johnny Paul and his fiddle with Sweet Georgia Brown. Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the features of your all-star Western theater each week is a great song of the West sung by the riders of the Purple Sage. Today, they've chosen a Western song that brings a peaceful thought to all who hear it. The riders of the Purple Sage sing Red River Valley. Thank you, Donald Berry, for being with us. You've added a lot to today's show. Well, that's about it for this time, friends. We'll be back with you again next week, and we hope you'll be with us. This is Foy Willing speaking for Al Sloy, Johnny Paul, Scotty Harrell, and all of the writers of the Purple Sage saying so long and good luck to you all. Drifting along. From Hollywood, you've heard your all star Western theater, a VM Bear production starring America's greatest Western singers. Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star has been Donald Berry, who appeared for the courtesy of Republic Pictures. The script was by Ray Wilson, directed by Tom Hargis. This is Terry O'Sullivan speaking. This program came to you from Columbia Square. KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles.